Hi everybody, welcome to my messy studio. I received a question and that really makes me happy because that's what inspires me to do a new video. I really love it when you ask a question because then I know that what I'm saying is useful. So ask me questions. Put questions in the comments. Uh, send me a message with questions and sometimes the questions are broad enough that I'll make a video and other times I can answer it in the comments. So the question was, what are the most important tools for making rings? And there's, once I started writing down the tools that I use every day, it was a long list. And I couldn't talk about all of them in one video. So I'll split it up into a few videos. But one of the ones I want to start with is your ring mandrel because sizing is so important in ring making. It's one of the very most important things because if your customer's ring doesn't fit then what's the point so it needs to fit so a sizing mandrel like this is very important it not only does it help you get the right size but it helps you form the ring into a perfectly round circle if that's what you're going for so this is a stainless steel mandrel and it's heavy and it's marked in lines Let's see if we can get close enough to show. Eh. There's lines that show the sizes all along here. So what you do is once you've soldered the ring together, you put it on here and you hammer it with a nylon hammer into the proper form. There's different kinds of mandrels to use and the stainless steel in my experience has been the best. I started out with a plastic mandrel because that's all I could afford and I didn't really know any better. And then I moved to an aluminum mandrel and that was a little bit better but this stainless steel mandrel has lasted a long time. It's heavy duty, it's tough, it doesn't get marred, it doesn't change, it doesn't break. So once you can afford to get the stainless steel mandrel, I recommend that you do it. So get this as soon as you can. The next thing I want to show you is the ring sizing chart from this is the chart I use. You can print it out on the inter from the internet. I will show you a link to that so that you can go download it. And what this does is I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see it better. So it's a ring blank sizing chart and on one side you're going to see here are the ring sizes and so you look for the ring size that you're going for and then if your ring is going to be smooth and not textured with a hammer then you can plot out the correct measurement from this immediately so that as soon as you hammer your ring onto the ring mandrel with the nylon hammer it will come out to the right size. It's like magic, math, mm, it's magic. And this is very handy, fast, reliable for the math type calculations. Now, let me tell you, okay, when I started making rings, I didn't have any formal training or anything, nobody to show me how to do this. So I was just figuring out everything for myself. So I didn't know about this. And I was doing math calculations using formulas and things like that to figure out how big of a, uh, how long of a strip to make to make it into the right size circle. So and then a fellow jeweler um, from Etsy was like, duh, Tina, you can just download this whole chart off the internet. So I'm telling you now so you don't have to go through years of painful math calculations like I did. Just download this chart from Contenti and you'll be happy. You'll be contenti. So one more thing, one more tool along with our sizing type tools. First we looked at the mandrel and then the ring sizing chart. But the other piece of that is finger gauges or a ring sizer. And this is what you want your customers to use in order to give you the correct ring size so you can make their ring the right size. What a concept. And these are divided in half sizes. There are some that you can get that are more expensive that are divided in quarter sizes. And I do have a set of those that I use in special circumstances. But I sell these. Some people give them away, but they cost money. And so I don't 
and they cost money to ship them. So I don't want to just give them away. I buy a whole bunch of these in bulk and I'll, I'll put a link up to show you where I get them from. I bought a whole bunch of them in bulk and they end up only costing me about a dollar or a little more each. But by the time I wrap, unwrap these, pack them, package them and everything else, that's a little bit of a chunk of money. So what I do is I put a price of in the US of $6.50 on these and I charge no shipping. So once you add up everything, I'm really maybe 50 cents maybe profit on this um, so but it's worth it because your customer then will have the assurance of having the right size ring a better assurance anyway does it's not foolproof and I give them a guarantee that if they purchase my ring sizer and they use it to, to size their finger then I'll resize the ring for free if it doesn't fit so that has worked out a lot better for me than just saying just you know yes or even go to the jewelry store to get earring size because a lot of times they go to the jewelry store to get their finger size and they come up with these totally wrong sizes. I don't know what they're telling them at the jewelry store, but the sizer has worked out best for me. And then on top of that, because they spent a few bucks to get the sizer, I always put a coupon code in there for $10 off their purchase that they can use. So it makes up for it. Now you might not want to do that or you might want to get a smaller discount or you might just want to send these out for free. What I found out is they're more committed if they have to pay for it. They're more committed to coming back and buying a ring from you. If I send them out a free ring size, I might never hear from them again and then I'm out what I sent. And I'm not a big, huge company to be able to do that. So ring size or finger gauge is the next important tool that goes along with the ring mandrel and the sizing chart to make sure you get the right sizes. If you have any questions, please, like I said at the beginning, ask me questions. I want to hear your questions. It inspires me to continue and to keep going and make more videos. So just make a comment in the comment section below or if you're an experienced jeweler and you have a different way of doing all this and let us know that too and, and just let us know in the comments.